Water is sacred. Water is life. Water is sacred. Water is life. Water is sacred. Water is life. Water is life. Water is life. Water is life. Mini Wachoni. Aho. Ito na may mga poero ay na. There has been a great amount of injury and hurt that has occurred upon the lands all across the world. And it is no mistake, it is no error, it is no coincidence that the first peoples of the land are the ones who are taking the hardest, strongest stances in order to protect it. The only way that the current domination and exploitation has occurred is because they needed to remove and disempower and destroy the people who have intrinsically defended and protected the land in, an, in a sustainable way. This is no longer, we have no longer have the luxury to put climate change crisis on the back burner. We're talking about leading scientists throughout the world are saying within 10 years, there will be crisis, a global economic and cultural and environmental crisis throughout the world. You can look into the Maldives, they're all, they're going underwater. You look in Venice, one month out of the, one third of the year, Venice is underwater. You come over here to Hawaii, you see that our roads are getting washed out. Over the past hundred years or so, they believe that the waters have risen maybe a couple of feet. The predictions are is it will rise by a couple of meters within the next couple of decades. Now, when we're talking about solutions, we're talking about solutions that are going to solve the problems that are really threatening the entire planet. And they've tried to relegate indigenous cultures into the subset of, of this just spirituality. They denigrate our science. We say, they say we're anti-science, when in reality, the indigenous peoples of the world are the first scientists because we observed the land that we are on, we took care of it, and we knew the effect that our, our actions had upon the waters, the earth, the sky, and the wind, and the animals, and the plants around us. It's not just a song. It's not just the dress. It's not just the food that we eat. It is a whole system of integrated, responsible, sustainable, intelligent, scientific, spiritual, and holistic culture. There is no mistake there is no coincidence that in order for this current system of exploitation and extraction to occur is it had to destroy the peoples that protected it. And right now, those who are the most disenfranchised, the most vulnerable, the most downtrodden, we will continue, continue to fight. We will continue to stand and we will call upon every pe person on the planet Earth. You no longer have the, the luxury to wait. We don't have the chance to think about in the future. We're not talking about the future of our children. We're talking about our future right now. What's happening right now is we don't have time to waste. So for myself, I'm a Kauka. I'm part of the Kauka's Association. I'm going to be presenting at um, Pacific Region Indigenous Doctors Conference. And I'm, so I'm going to make a call out to the healers of our community. Can't do blood pressure screenings anymore. We can't just talk about access. We need to go to the front lines and we need to protect the people who are protecting us. That is our kuleana. We have to work as one kino. We have to take care of each other. We can't let our warriors go out in front of dogs and tanks and bulldozers and not be ready to heal them when they are on the front lines. So this Tuesday, I'm going to be looking forward to seeing you because we are going there as well. We will be joining our people up there who are already there, Auntie Pua Case, Uncle San Kaliha Omelu, Havani Rios. They are there already. They made a nice emu for the Standing Rock people in celebration. They made an emu. Because they knew, they knew that this would come. 
that they would stand, and when they stand for Pono, that the, that the right thing would happen. But it wasn't by accident. It was by force. They were forced to do that. And so what we're going to have to do is in every single place, in every single island, in every single continent, we're going to have to stand and we're going to have to make them because we can no longer wait for them because they don't have the solutions. They don't have. They're trying to create this green economy and these little tiny little switches and twicks and to still create a culture of profit upon the land. And that is no longer a luxury we have the ability to afford to do. So I am going there myself representing the warriors of Haloa. The warriors of Haloa, the, the farmers, the color farmers of Hawaii. We have every sting at every single major uh, lens or water struggle, the, the color farmers have stood. We have stood for the water here in Hawaii. And right now we have color farmers and in, in, in Maui fighting for their water. Again, against big corporations. Water is life. We know that kawaii ola. Ayehea kawaii kane. Where are the waters of life? The waters of life are in you. They are in your children. They are in the land. They are in the sky. And we need to protect all of them. We know what they believe. We know what they're going to do. And we need to be ready to stop them. Mahalo no. Aloha. If you need a sign, please ask Kiana. She has a lot of extra signs. Mahalo for coming on behalf of the North Dakota Access Pipeline today. We stand in solidarity with them. Aloha aina malama ikawai. Take care of our land and save our water. Without water, we are, there is no life. Our fellow brothers and sisters being attacked by vicious animals. Actually, it wasn't the animal's fault, so sorry. Um, but yes, that was the final straw for me. And I just, um, between the last 24 years of struggles for Hawaiians and watching it get national attention and um, feeling everything that they were feeling, um, I could not sit idle and I know that none of these folks could either. So. Um, Again, thank you folks very much for coming and supporting the indigenous peoples. And it's not just the indigenous peoples issue. Water is, once it's gone, <laughs> that's it. So, mahalo nui loa for everybody that showed and um, continue to fight, continue to protect, because we are protectors. We are not protesting anything. We're just protecting Mother Earth. Mahalo. Mahalo, Kiana. I want to thank everyone for coming out today. Um, Kiana Marshall is the organizer of this event, and I want to mahalo her for having the heart and the mana'o and the drive to actually put this together. We are standing in solidarity with a lot of groups across the nation. I don't know if any of you have seen the news, have gone on Facebook, social media. There are protests across this nation. There was just one in San Diego the other day, and um, we are... And it's about time we had one here in Hawaii, right on. Um, and I'm glad we're here in Waikiki because we can actually get a little bit more exposure. We can share with residents as well as visitors who are coming here to our aina, to our land, what is important to us and that we, we need to actually stand for, we need to protect what we have now or it'll be gone. Um, we are here in solidarity with the Standing Rock tribe, the Lakota and the Sioux tribes in North Dakota, as well as hundreds and thousands of other people that are gathering up there. We're here in, in solidarity saying that we support you. We as native people of this land, as the native Hawaiians of this land, we're going through the same thing. We're having to fight for our water. We're having to fight for our land rights. And we are actually being being put in, under the DOI, the Department of Interior, and being created into a native Hawaiian tribe. And that is so concerning to us as Hawaiians because look at how the Department of Interior treats its, the Native Americans on the continent. They have the worst statistics 
in the United States. They have the worst, the worst health, social, economic. Their 55 million acres that the Department of Interior manages, they mismanage it. They give, they give cheap contracts to huge corporations and make money off of that while the native people remain poor. Their lands are mineral rich lands. They got water on their land, they have minerals on their land, but they're still living in poverty. Why is that? And that's what's gonna happen right here in Hawaii when we become a Native American tribe. That's why we're asking that, that President Obama stop the Department of Interior proposed rule to create a Native Hawaiian tribe. That rule will keep all lands that the military sits on in Hawaii, which is all stolen Hawaiian lands, under federal rule. We'll, keep, we'll give them basically all that land. It's about 900,000 acres. That rule will rip us of every right that we have to 2 million acres of prime real estate land. Hawaiians in our own homeland have the worst statistics. We have the worst health, we have the worst education, the, the worst social economic statistics in Hawaii. But we have two million acres of land, and how is that? Because the state of Hawaii holds that land in trust for us, mismanages that land. We, are, we make up almost 40% of the homeless here on this island. We are in the same situation as our brothers and sisters on the continent, our Native American brothers and sisters. So we're here standing in solidarity with them, and letting them know we support you, we understand, and we, we cannot be put in that same situation. Right now, the Department of Interior rule, which will create a Native Hawaiian tribe, similar to that of Native American tribes, is in its final stages, which means that Hawaiians will be under the Department of Interior, just like the Native Americans. And how do they treat Native Americans? It's terrible. They have, if you, I, I've been to many reservations. I don't know if any of you have been to reservations. Their, their quality of living, they, they get millions of dollars from the federal government, millions. Half of that money, the, half of that money goes straight to the Bureau of In, Indian Affairs. It goes right into the administration. And that's the same thing. We have a right, Native Hawaiians, to two million acres of land. All of the military bases that are on these islands are on stolen Hawaiian lands, and yet we are the poorest in the state. They prostitute our culture for tourism. You guys don't come here to see Japanese culture, do you? Or you don't come here to see um, East European culture. You come here to see Hawaiian culture. They prostitute our culture. We make very little money off of any kind of hula shows or any other um, um, cultural shows that you see here in, in Waikiki. We have the worst education statistics, we have the worst economic statistics, the worst, um, we're, we're the most, we're the highest population in prisons right now. Over 50% of the populations in Hawaii's prison system is Hawaiian. And so, uh, if this Department of Interior rule goes through, things will only get worse. But we want to say, we cannot live without water, and that's what they've been taking from us. We cannot live without land, and they hold control of all of our lands, the state of Hawaii, and now the Department of Interior will be the ones taking control of that. So we need to stand up, and we need, to, we were standing up today in solidarity with the, with the Standing Rock Reservation, and with their issue in terms of saving their water rights. We know how it feels to have our kupuna or our ancestor bones bulldozed. But what was really treacherous, what was really terrible was how they treated them at their peaceful protest this past Labor Day. Bringing dogs and macing them. This was a private corporation that was hired by the oil company. Private security. And that's what we have to expect. That's how we're going to be treated if we go, if we are put under the Department of Interior. Huge corporations making deals with the United States for our lands to develop them, and and Hawaiians being being attacked. 
we are we have we are in resistance and we will not let this go quietly and we're here i want to mahalo everybody here for standing up for our brothers and sisters on the continent the standing rock tribe the lakota the sioux the thousands that have joined them we stand here in solidarity with them and, and as well with all the other supporters across the United States. We're not the only ones protesting, but we just wanted to um, do one here in Hawaii. So mahalo everyone for coming. No Dakota, access pipeline. No Dakota, access pipeline. No Dakota, access pipeline. No Dakota, access pipeline. Water is life. Water is sacred. You take away the water, you take away the future. We gotta protect what's precious for the future generations. We love you, Earth Warriors. Aloha. Aloha from Hawaii. Uh, we stand in solidarity with our relations, our brothers and sisters at Standing Rock. Uh, we do not want the pipeline. Water is life everywhere. I just spoke with someone who couldn't understand why we're in Hawaii and we're standing with someone so far away from us. But it's the truth that we are all connected and it doesn't matter where you poison, the land, the water, the air, we are connected. You're not isolated, we don't live in a bubble, we live in the same planet. And whatever you do one place to the planet affects every single one of us. So water is life and we can't drink oil. We can drink water. Water is life. We can't live without water. Aloha. Shimisen Week, good afternoon. I just want to say thank you to everyone for coming out. Um, this is really special to have, there was, there was a call to action made and you know, there's hundreds of actions happening all over the world and so we're part of this collective movement, we're part of this bigger energy that's happening in, in stopping the pipeline and my friend Lana's here with me and she lives here now in, on the islands and, um, and she's Cheyenne River that's her homeland and that's the the land where um where the river cut flows down from is is right there on her land and so out of respect for, for that i wanted you know her to speak um but i'll just quickly introduce myself um, my name's morning star galley i'm ajimawi band of pit river i live in northeastern california up by mount shasta um for the the past 10, 15 years, I've been really active in sacred site protection issues and really following um, the efforts that, that were going on here and continuing to go on with Mauna Kea. And um, so we've been involved with like the San Francisco Peaks and our efforts to protect Medicine Lake back home. And, and it's all connected, this issue of, of, of recreation, you know, recreation in the name of, of desecration of our sacred places and so um, the issue with the pipeline you know there was a, a small wind that happened yesterday um, but it's really just holding people off and so I'm heading over there on Tuesday I'm flying out on Monday and I'm, I'm flying to Standing Rock on Tuesday and so if there's any messages or you know any offerings that people want me to bring um, I'm, I'm open to that and and um, would be welcome to, you know, to bring that and... Yes, yes, so that's beautiful. So I'm gonna hand it over to, to Lana now. Thank you, Morning Star, and thank all of you for coming. My name is Lana Knight. I'm uh, Pujuta Waka Chaitawi. Uh, Sacred Medicine Hakuna from Munkojo Band of uh, Lakota. And I'm Cheyenne River. We're, we're back to back our land, um, you know, with Standing Rock. So, you know, our, we have a radio station and they call it the Rock and the River. Um, it, they, <clears throat> so we're included, you know, and we're relatives and a lot of people on my um, reservation own land also in um, in Standing Rock. So um, our river, Minikosia means that we plant by the river. And um, 
So the river has been, uh, you know, it's the big muddy and um, our lands were back, they built a dam in, um, called Oahi Dam in South Dakota and it backed up the land that we were on and so my, my uh, tribe is uh, displaced. We were removed from our land and they backed up the water there and um, moved us to another location and this happened when I was 10 years old. I'm a boarding school survivor that's also like intergenerational trauma and I've, uh, I've been a helper to my people since I was 19 years old when um, I occupied Alcatraz Island in the Bay Area. And I also uh, was part of Pitt River, uh, Pitt River battle uh, and fishing rights and wounded me. And uh, in it all, I got an education. Uh, of, you know, so I worked as a, um, in mental health and uh, my efforts were specialized in uh, suicide a lot of suicides uh, with our youth and we, we lost oh, there's a lot of young people to that and you know it's preventable 100 percent preventable but our trauma and um not having you know enough services to provide mental health for people healing we really have to decolonize and you know they colonized us and we have like a disease. So we have to decolonize ourselves and heal ourselves so uh, all these prayers can be answered because our ancestors have been watching over us all the time. They're all around us. The spirits are all around us. And um, I pray for safety for everyone in the camp. And um, I just know the power of the struggle that we've always been in and um, the power of prayer and how my people are, are in the camp and teaching in the camp and um, you know, uh, people who don't know their ways are coming to our ways and um, there's a lot of uh, a lot of good energy there. It's peaceful. My sisters all uh, text and sh you know send pictures and and how beautiful the camp is and how how the canoes were on the river and they haven't seen canoes on the river so for so many years. So it's like and then they were blessed with um, with storms and thunder and lightning and. Um, they were blessed with rain yesterday. So um, I ask for you to continue your prayers and continue sending them love and light and um, you know many blessings to all of you for coming out today and beautiful uh, Hawaii and uh, supporting our efforts. And we also stand with Mauna Kea and, um, and um, you know, we love Mauna Kea also, and we know the power that, that is there. So thank you so much, and you know, return the Black Hills, and, <laughs> and our, uh, you know, the heart, the heart of the earth in the Black Hills, sacred Black Hills, that, that's our land. Thank you, Creator, for bringing me here and allowing me to speak to the people. Mitako uh, Yasin. Water is sacred. Water ain't live. Water is sacred. Water ain't live. Water is sacred. Water is live. Water is sacred. Water is alive. 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 So what makes Alright, hi, I'm a 
47 year resident of Hawaii, but my dad's from Iowa. This is our family farm that's 100 feet away from where the pipeline is crossing the South Skunk River, right next to our floodplain forest of 40 acres that gets flooded every year. So, um, totally against this, not only for our farmlands, all the farmlands in Iowa, the Standing Rock Tribe, um, and all the people that are going to be affected by climate change. And so I hope everybody calls out to Obama to stop this pipeline as soon as possible. Mahalo. We have Sylvia, um, who lives here, but uh, her Aina is very close to a pipeline. So um, here she is to speak. Mahalo. Aloha, and I'm so glad to see everybody here. Um, yeah, I, I live in Hawaii. I've been here 47 years, since the age of 14. Um, but my dad is from Iowa, and we have a family farm that's pictured here with my daughter, who's the eighth generation to own this farm. It's 117 acres, 40 acres of its forest reserve on the South Skunk River, 100 feet from where the pipeline is going to cross the river. So uh, this forest floods every winter, so if there's an oil spill, it's going to impact this 40-acre uh, forest reserve. The rest of the land, since we live in Hawaii, is in conservation, prairie, tall grass prairie, and, and uh, other conservation. Um, so in May, on May 30th, we held the first uh, Bakken Pipeline Resistance Flotella uh, going past this property. They've held several since then. I, I know everybody knows about Standing Rock. I just want to let you know about there's other states impacted, you know. It's the Missouri River twice, the Mississippi River. There's 244 rivers in Iowa that are going to be crossed, including 17 major navigable waterways. If you look at the map, it goes diagonally across to Iowa. So uh, the people in Iowa, 30 of them were arrested late, earlier this week. They're standing on the lines fighting it. And uh, so I just wanted mahalo everyone for coming here and uh, hopefully we can stop the pipeline not only uh, near Standing Rock but the whole place because I mean if this oil gets to the Gulf and then gets shipped off it's going into the air and it's going to cause global warming, coral bleaching, uh, you know sea, uh, seashore erosion for our islands, it's going to cause it for other Pacific islands it's going to cause human migration. There's just so many negative impacts, and there's no reason to have this pipeline, which will convey a million gallons of oil per hour uh, to to go forward. Now, and another thing you can do for this $3.8 billion pipeline, it's being funded by a lot of major banks. The primary one is Citibank. So I have a Citibank Visa card. I'm going to cancel it and go to my credit union because you know, we got to pinch them where it hurts. And money is what they're interested in. Mahalo. Dave Molinex. Um, been organizing for quite a while in Hawaii with 350.org Hawaii, Our Revolution Hawaii, I don't know more Hawaii, and uh, the Occupy Honolulu. Um, I just want to talk about organizing and I want to thank everybody who came out today. You guys are all making a difference and that you need to realize that what you're doing, although it may seem insignificant, is a major uh, help to make change happen. No politician has ever changed anything. Realize that. No politician you've ever voted for ever changed anything. The only thing that ever changed anything was the people united making change happen. That's the only thing. The, the Abraham Lincoln gets credit for the Emancipation Proclamation, which is absolutely BS. It was the abolitionist who forced him to sign and put forth the Emancipation Proclamation. So it was organizing, just like we're doing, that forced him to do that. The women's movement did the same thing with voting. No politician gave women the right to vote. They got together and said, we demand it. 
Uh, union organizing, that happened because people got together demanded minimum wage. They demanded uh, fair pay. They demanded a paid vacation. And that was because everyone got together and organized to make that happen. Uh, we stopped the war in Vietnam. We got civil rights done. All of those things had nothing to do with any politician. It was us, the people, banding together to force change. We just saw this happen with the TMT. All of our brave warriors, Aloha Aina warriors, up on top of the mountain, they stood together and forced the government to back down. And that's the same thing that's happening right now in North Dakota. And so every person, no matter how small a thing you're doing, is incredibly important. Whether you, you know, post something on your Facebook page, come out, hold a sign, send some money, no matter how small your effort, realize it's helpful. So just do it. And whatever you're doing, just do one more thing. Write a letter to the editor or, you know, come out one more time. But the more that we get involved, the more we actually take control, the more we actually demand our actions be uh, noticed and that the government do what the people want, then the more we can be successful. So I just want to thank everybody. All you guys are terrific. I, I just love all you guys. I'm just so happy to see you here. And uh, Ole TNT, Ole to Dakota Access Pipeline. Aloha. activist and a media worker. I just want to support you here today and it really heartens me that indigenous peoples and people from all, all cultures are standing behind the Dakota issue uh, and the Native American Indians at stake here. Um, you know, it's not always the case that intertribal or intercultural groups support one another and that's always been an issue for me. So I'm, so I'm so pleased that not only Hawaiians, but everyone around the world is getting behind this issue. Aloha.
to put pressure on Obama. He can stop this thing right now. And, and so we're going to gather at the federal building from 4 to 6, uh, bring the same wonderful signs that you have, and we're going to try to get some media there to uh, send a message to Obama to stop this now, to keep his promise that he made when he visited the Standing Rock Reservation two years ago. He promised the people to help to protect them, that they were entitled to live in a, in a, a, a safe world. And, and this, what is happening to them and is being unleashed upon them is not a safe world. So we're asking him, telling him, we're not asking, we are telling him, keep your promise and end this thing right now. So four to six, we're gonna be sign waving in front of the federal building on Alamoana Boulevard. And um, it's um, gonna do our best to get media there and uh, get the word to Obama. Uh, and um, people from across the country are going to be doing it at the same time. So in unity, we will be sending that message. So hope to see you all there again. Aloha. Water is life. Water is sacred.